Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House again, taking a look at some of the guns they have for sale in their upcoming uh, June 2015 regional auction. And I thought I would pick a gun today that just is a really good example of how something that looks at first glance really simple can actually have a whole lot of interesting features kind of hidden inside it that you don't see until you're willing to really take a, a close look at a gun. So what I have in particular here is an Ethan Allen drop breech single shot rifle. These were manufactured from 1860 to about 1870. They were, they were made in a bunch of different uh, configurations, different barrel lengths, different calibers, etc. A couple different types of sights on them. This particular one is a brass framed version. It's in 42 rim fire and I want to show you how much interesting stuff there can be in something as basic as a single shot rimfire rifle. So let's bring the camera back here and get right to it. So the first thing that will probably jump out at you when you take a look at this rifle, aside from the, the standout brass frame, is this rear sight. It's very simple, it's just a rear notch and it has a series of dimples machined into the receiver from one out to ten, hundreds of yards, and you just put the pointer to the range that you want and it raises the sight to the appropriate place. You know, that's just cool. We don't really see rifle sights set up like this anymore. I mean, obviously this is not something that's going to stand up to military use today, but you know what? That's just neat and cool looking, especially in brass. So once you get done playing with that, the next thing you're probably going to look at is the action. This is a falling block action. I have the hammer at half cock here and there's a little secondary latch at the back of the trigger guard. When I pull that it allows me to drop the breech. So I can put a shell in there. If I already have a shell there is a spring-loaded extractor. So as I pull the breech block down, pulls the case out for me, then I can put in a new shell and latch the breech block back into place. Very simple. Um, this isn't massively strong, but this is just fine for some of the, the relatively lightly powered rimfire cartridges of the Civil War era. Now, there's yet more to it. First off, let's pull out the breech block and take a quick look at it. The whole assembly is held in place by just one little cross pin screw. So, let's take that out. You can See, it's only threaded at the end. Most of it's just a solid pin. Then I can pull out the breech block assembly. I can drop out the firing pin. Very simple. There's no spring in it. It's just a free-floating firing pin. And well, that's interesting. There are two holes in the breech face because this rifle was actually converted to center fire. These were originally made as rim fire guns. And all it takes to convert it to center fire is to simply drill a second hole. Let's see if we can get a view of that. So there's one firing pin hole, and there's the other. And all you have to do to, to switch between the two types of cartridge is push the firing pin in at a different angle. So there's center fire. I can drop it out, lean it this way, and reconfigure the gun for rim fire. So that's cool. We can change between center fire and rim fire ammunition very, very quickly. But that does kind of raise the, per the, the question of how useful is it to switch back and forth if, in fact, you know, you've got the same cartridge. So that would let us switch from a 44 rim fire to an identical 44 center fire. Except there's yet more to this gun. We have one little square headed screw on this side behind the rear sight and if I take that out this is just a tapered pin once I take that out oh my goodness this is actually a takedown rifle so our barrel and chamber come out as a complete separate unit from the action So if I want to change the entire cartridge that I'm using, more than just going from a rimfire to a centerfire version, I could get a different barrel assembly and just drop it in. I might have to change the extractor 
uh, which would not be difficult. But other than that, a new barrel assembly and, and a different extractor if the case head was significantly different in size. And that's all you need. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. This was never used as a military arm, but uh, after the Civil War, it was actually adopted as a, a standardized rifle by a couple different state militias. So, you know, there's, there's definitely some historical interest to this, as well as its, I think, very interesting utilitarian functions. So, if you'd like to have it yourself, of course, being at an auction house, it is coming up for sale. If you check the link below, that will take you to Rock Island's catalog page about it. Take a look at their pictures, um, everything you need to know about it that they have online, and then you can actually place a bid online as well. And if you're lucky, end up owning it yourself. Thanks for watching.